So I did a live stream a couple of days ago and the kind of concept behind it was, is Gutenberg becoming more like a page builder in the traditional sense of a page builder that we're used to? Things like Elementor, Divi, those kinds of tools. Well, today I'm going to go over a couple of add-ons for Gutenberg that I think make it so much closer to those kinds of tools that in some ways actually exceed what you can get in a lot of common, especially some of the top page builders right now. As always, though, I would love to get your feedback on what I cover in this, what tools you're using, and how you feel that the way Gutenberg is actually moving forward. Have you swapped over to it yet? Are you considering it? Would tools like what you see in this video make you think twice about moving away from the tools you may currently be using? Let me know in the comment section down below. Okay, so let's just quickly hop over and take a look at three examples and why I think they're definitely worth taking a look at, even if you don't use these specific tools. It should open your eyes to some of the things that are becoming available and how Gutenberg is actually becoming way more powerful than it was. So first up, we have Quickly. Now, I've talked about Quickly several times in the past, including on the live stream. And I think this is one of those tools that we need to keep an eye on. So this has undergone quite a considerable change since I first took a look at it about probably six to seven months ago. And I kind of revisited this a few days ago, and I'll link that video in the description. But basically, if we take a look at Quickly itself, you can see this is so much more like a page builder and so many of the tools inside you and the way it's laid out and works is very familiar in a page builder-esque way. For example, if we take a look on the left hand side, you can see we've got a customized navigation section that shows us every single element, every single block, all of those are listed inside you. Now, there's some modifications in the way this works over standard Gutenberg, but if you are used to Gutenberg, it is going to feel relatively familiar. And if you're coming from a page builder, it's going to feel very familiar. We've also got then options on the side to quickly insert anything like divs, sections, your common kind of building block elements, typography, paragraphs, icon, those kinds of things, and images and so on. But if we take a look over on the right hand side, you can see you've got the primary options. And if you're coming from a tool like Oxygen, where you like working with classes, uh, global classes and things like that, for the speed in which it allows you to very, very quickly make sweeping changes across your entire site just by simply updating some of the styling for any of those classes. This is also integrated into Quickly. So all the basics are covered and some seriously useful advanced and intermediate features. However, if we come over into advanced, you can see inside there, and again, this is probably very familiar if you're coming from a tool like Oxygen, you've got things broken down into your backgrounds, your typography, your layouts, and so on. And one of the nice things about working with Quickly is this fully supports both CSS Grid and Flexbox, so you've got lots of control in how you want to lay things out, sizing, shaping, positioning, and all those kinds of things. You've got interactions, so if you like the way that you can create some kind of animated interactions and things with a tool like Webflow, some of those kinds of things are inside Quickly as well. And again, if you are familiar with working with a tool like Webflow, you're probably going to find transitioning over into something like this if you wanted to use WordPress wouldn't be that difficult. There's a lot of similarities in the way you would build things out. So as you can see, there's an awful lot of options inside here. We can control the layout. We can control the display. So we can work with flex, inline flex, block, those kinds of things. You can set up your sizing, your part, mar margins, padding, those kinds of things, your animations. You've also got effects inside here. So you can see we've got transitions, we've got animations, we've got filters, shadows, tilts. There's a lot of different options to control exactly how you want everything to work. You've also got the option there for handling all of your responsive modes across the top. You can scale things, you can preview. There's also options inside you for global styles, for your block typography, your colors, typography, elements, and so on. You've also, with Quickly in this specific example, have Advanced Custom Fields Pro integrated directly into Quickly itself. So you can work with dynamic data straight inside Quickly without the need to go and purchase a license for ACF Pro. So you get your repeaters, all those kinds of things integrated into this. There's a lot to like about Quickly. It does have a learning curve. There's no two ways about it. But like I say, if you come from any of those other tools, you may find that transition relatively simple and straightforward. 
Now, the next tool I want to take a look at is one that's kind of been brought to my attention very recently, and I've only just started taking a look at it. But this is GreenShift. Now, this is very similar or very akin to what we've just seen inside Quickly. It doesn't have any kind of dynamic tools built into it, but there are additional paid for modules that you need to be able to work with that, but you can work with dynamic data. However, the free version of GreenShift gives you an awful lot to work with. If we hop over into a page created with GreenShift, you can see you can create some quite comprehensive and complex layouts. It comes with a range of different templates, although they are kind of pretty basic. However, if you take a look over on the right hand side, and let's open up the sort of la the layers panel so you can see how everything is broken down inside here. You can see we can get quite comprehensive in how we want to lay things out. And if we cl click on the plus, you can see there's an awful lot of options that come in the free version of GreenShift. So your containers, your rows, advanced head-ins, those kinds of things. You've also got images, you've got content toggles, countdown timers, there's, there's a bunch of stuff inside here. If we come over though to the right-hand side and look at the block level controls, you can see We've got full control over the various different responsive modes, including portrait and landscape modes, so you can easily switch those over and see what your design is going to look like on any of those devices. So very quick and easy. You've also got the options then for your container link, so you can make an entire container, a link, and so on. Your background opacity, overlay effects, spacing, you know, all the kind of things you'd normally expect. However, jumping over to the advanced tab, you can see we've also got the options for animation effects. Again, we've got a range of different animation effects inside here. You can choose the various different durations, delays, and so on. You can use GSAP animation libraries. You can see there's an option inside here for that as well. You come down, we've got your CSS transform, you've got your positions. There's, there's a lot of different options inside here, including the normal hover and infinite states. But you can see just by the general options, there's a ton of different controls inside here and more than enough to kind of build out most basic website layouts. But it is interesting to see where this is going. And with some of those advanced add-ons, you can get into dynamic data and integrate that directly into GreenShift itself. So one worth checking out if you want to take a look at this, I would recommend checking out the free version before you look at any paid versions, just to make sure you kind of get on with the way this all works. Now, before we wrap up GreenShift and move on, let's take a quick look at some of the unique features. You can see we've got smart loaders built in. You can use anywhere with dynamic load in. Your smart control for carousels. But what's more interesting is the fact, again, this works with the CSS grid and the Flexbox model. So we have those options, which gives us more control over our layers, which is always a good thing to see. You've got advanced sliders and carousels, shape dividers, 3D flip boxes, and a range of other things, including, like you say, transitions and so on. And for those that are looking for optimizing things, you can see if we take a look, there's no global files. In other words, it only loads what it needs on the page and none of those extraneous files. You've got no dependency, so you're not having to rely upon jQuery fonts or icon libraries. You've also got smart loaders for special blocks like Lottie, 3D sliders, plugins, and so on. So you should be able to get pretty respectable scores with a pretty optimized website using something like GreenShift. For me, out of all the packs that they offer, the Query Builder Pack extension probably be the one that I would look into because this is the one that's going to give you the ability to create advanced listings with WooCommerce. You know, you can create query block patterns. There's a lot of different options inside you. And this is going to kind of give you that more dynamic control over what can be done. So that's GreenShift in a nutshell. No affiliate links. This is just me taking a first look because I think this is an interesting tool that you may want to check out for yourself if you are looking to work with Gutenberg. Links in the description below if you want to check that out. Now, the third one on my list is probably not quite as comprehensive as those first two. However, the recent updates, and this is predominantly in the free version, opens up a lot of possibilities for creating more advanced websites. And if you want to go a little further, when the pro version of 1.5 of Generate Blocks actually ships, which I don't know when that will be, you'll have even more control over the dynamic content and how it's listed. So let's go ahead and take a quick look at what I'm talking about. This is a relatively simple example of working with the query loop, which is the new feature that's been added into 1.5 of Generate Blocks. It works the best with Generate Press, but you can use it with any theme that you want to work with. So don't feel you're restricted to only working with Generate Press and Generate Blocks together. That's not the case. 
But you can see what we have here is we've got a query loop builder and this allows us to create a template and that will be replicated throughout your entire loop. So having the ability to customize this gives you an awful lot of flexibility when you wanna create your own custom designs. Bear in mind, this is also integrated with the Flexbox model. It's incredibly fast to work with. And once you kind of get what past what appear to be some limitations, you can do an awful lot with generate blocks, even though it only ships with a handful of different block elements. But as you can see, we've got the query loop options. We can choose where the query is coming from, posts and loops. We can choose how many we want to show on a page so we can increase that number if we want to. And you can see the loop will increase to show us all the additional posts up until that maximum. You've got pagination as part of the options. And this is all inside the free version. None of this is pro at all. You can see then if you come into your grid inside there, we've got Flexbox grid so we can control the gaps in between columns, rows. We can go ahead and we can customize this if we want to, very, very specific values. You can come into your alignment. You can change your horizontal alignment. There's all those different options inside there. Then you can come into your post template and your post template is controlled by basically the container width. So if you want to get three side by side or you want to have just one, you can see all used in Flexbox model, incredibly easy to customize this. And then if you look inside any of these, each one of these is a dynamic element. And as you can see, we can come over to the right hand side, we can customize padding margins, colors, all those things. We can choose the dynamic data, where that's grabbing that information from, what the source is. And as you can see, we've got a range of different places we can grab data and you can customize all of this so you can very quickly and easily build things up. If you do decide to go for the pro version of generate blocks, you also then get things like effects. And as you can see, I've created a range of different effects, transitions and box shadows. So you ho hover over any of these, you can see we get this nice slow transition between the shadow to give a pseudo 3D effect. But all of this is done inside just the generate blocks plugin. It's very easy. Like I say, this is a pro only feature, but the query builder, the loop builder and all those things, that's in the free version. So this is where I'm kind of coming from with this little video. It's not a tutorial, it's not a guide, it's not a recommendation. It's just literally, for me, I do think the days of the requirement to work with the page builder, whether you still want to or not, is entirely up to you. But I think the days where that's a requirement to be able to create full sites, page layouts that are more advanced, interactive, very, very fast loading, I think tools like GreenShift Quickly and Generate Blocks are incredibly exciting and moving us in the right direction. We're not as reliant as we were upon the core version of Gutenberg itself, these kind of add-on. But what we're getting with these is most of the functionality out of popular page builders, but without the need to optimize to the nth degree to handle the extra code that we're kind of being generated with these different page builders. Because we're working with block level elements, they are inherently quicker and reduce the need for us to use tools like WP Rocket and caching and all those kinds of things because we get straight out of the box pretty fast websites. So that's what I wanted to cover or talk about in this video, but I want your feedback on everything I've covered today. Let me know in the comment section below, are these interesting tools? Would you consider moving over to using these? Or have you already made that shift from your traditional page builders like Elementor, Divi, and so on? Let me know in the comment section. As always, all applicable links are in the description below. My name is Paul C. This is WP Tetson. Until next time, take care.